right, well, welcome everybody back to the youtube.com slash Ryan's Vedic Astrology channel uh, here at Asheville Vedic Astrology. Um, I've got the pleasure to be meeting with uh, Mitchell Scott Lewis today. His website is mitchastro.com. Uh, he specializes in medical astrology as well as financial astrology and will be a speaker at the NCGR conference in February of 2017 in Baltimore. So if you want to learn more, you can uh, attend his workshops there. And he also happens to be the author um, of Murder in the 11th House, Death in the 12th House, and Evil in the First House. So we'll, we'll try to talk a little bit about that before we get done. But for today, I'd like to welcome you, Mitch. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks, Ryan. Nice to be here. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. And the topic that we decided to focus on primarily um, is medical astrology. <clears throat> so we'll just start real general and basic. And when you practice medical astrology, when you're helping people, you know, with their health and whatnot, um, typically, how do you approach that? And, you know, how would you even define medical astrology uh, as a separate field of astrology? Well, when you look at a regular, when you look at a chart for a normal reading, you look at the various parts of the chart, the houses, the aspects, etc. And you say, for example, the fifth house rules children, romance, creativity, gambling. The ninth house rules foreigners, long journeys, and many, many different things. Because there's a million things in our lives in 12 houses. When you do a medical read, the whole chart is now the body. All right. And each part of the chart represents different parts of the body. Um, for example, the very basics of medical astrology, Aries and Mars, the first house, rules the head. Taurus and the second house rules the throat. Gemini and the third house rules the lungs and the arms and the bronchial tubes, etc., and the vocal cords, and so on. And the last sign is Pisces, which rules the feet. And uh, what Western astrology, which is known as Ptolemaic astrology, because of Claudius Ptolemy, uh, he, 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 not him, but the, the, the Romans and Greeks put it into a very formalized study, as they did with everything. Everything with the Greeks was very, very logical from their point of view. This was the whole point, I believe, of much of their, their civilization. So they put all the astrology stuff that had been studied since the Babylonians into a logical sort. And when you do medical astrology, it's all extremely logical. Right. When I look at uh, somebody's chart, whenever I do a reading, because I've been doing medical work since I started many, many years ago, and it's just uh, something that I'm, I'm, I have a knack for. I've got the moon on the ascendant. I pick up a lot of vibes from people, especially about their health and their psychological health. And, they come up. and whenever I do a read for them, whatever else is going on, they want to know about a job, they want to know something else, still my focus goes to the medical, mm -hmm. to the body and the spirit. And uh, when, I, when I do lectures and workshops on medical work, of course, what I explain to people is that we're made up of three different levels, the physical, the psychological, and the spiritual. And if there's a problem in any one of those fields, there's a problem in all three. It's a matter of identifying exactly where the problem comes from. Uh, sometimes it's a genetic or hereditary physical issue. Sometimes it's a psychological issue. Mm -hmm. I had a, a client uh, a few years ago who had a terrible problem with her neck. The vertebrae were disintegrating. And as I looked at the chart, I said to her, uh, uh, did your mother die a number of years ago? She said, yes, as a matter of fact, she did. I said, did it, what did she die of? Well, her, she had a, an accident, and her back was damaged. And uh, the doctors over-medicated her, and it took her three years to die. And during that period, the daughter sat by her bedside. She was not in therapy. She was not dealing with the inner issues that were going on and the psychological issues. And she kept all of her tension in her neck. Mm -hmm. And she wound up disintegrating her vertebrae, similar to what her mother had had. Now, by the time she got to me, the physical damage had already been done. I did suggest she get into therapy to try and work through the karma of it and, and to release that psychological issue. But it can start in any one of those three areas. It could be what we call spiritual or karmic as well, dealing with past lives or what we inherit through the family and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
so I try and get very, very specific. Right. Um, I'm, I'm working on a book on it, and I, and I want to get as specific as I can for other astrologers to be used. Right. And so when you, you know, when you were working with this woman, I just, for example, what made you, when you saw her chart, was there a particular planetary combination? What made you just speak to that to see if that was actually true for her? What, what was the combination? Well, there's always, there's, yeah, there's always a planetary combination. Mm -hmm. I, I consider myself rather intuitive, or I wouldn't have been in this business for so many years. I don't like to use the word psychic because it's very misunderstood, and I don't know what that really means. I've met some of the greatest psychics in the world, and they're wrong as often as they're right. But, you know, <laughs> it's a bad come up with. But with astrology, sometimes I will uh, uh, catch, you know, something will make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I will say, well, you know, in her case, it was a very afflicted moon, mm -hmm. which rules the mother. Mm -hmm. And it was a uh, Venus-Pluto uh, opposition. Venus rules the neck, because it's Taurus, it's ruler. And the combination of the two simply led me to an understanding as I, you know, went through the entire chart. I, you can't simplify it. You have to right. understand make up the whole chart. Yeah. But uh, everything, everything made sense, and it fit right into that category. Mm -hmm. uh, another example that I use when I do lectures, a very dear friend a number of years ago who was an astrologer, but he wasn't that attuned with the medical. Mm -hmm. And he was going to Europe with his wife. They had planned a trip. And he said he had very bad back aches. Would I do a medical read for him before he went? He had an overabundance of eighth house planets in his natal chart, as well as the ruler of the eighth house being afflicted. Mm -hmm. And by transit, solar arc direction, progression, everything was happening there. I said to him, you have to have a colonoscopy before you go. Mm -hmm. The eighth house rules the reproductive organs, it rules the colon. And I, I said, there's growths. He said, is it cancer? I said, that's not for me to tell. You go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to. You need to. And, but I knew. There was very little doubt in my mind. He had let it go for so many years. He had advanced colon cancer. Mm -hmm. And it had spread to the liver. And the doctors told him if he had gone to Europe, he would have bled to death. Mm -hmm. As it turns out, we got another year of life for him, uh, you know, by getting him fixed. It, it killed him eventually. But mm -hmm. uh, he was such a spiritual guy. Mm -hmm that uh, I used to go to visit him quite a bit as he was deteriorating. And, uh, the last time I saw him, he said to me, uh, and I had the charts out, we were going to do a reading. He said to me, don't Mitch, don't bother. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said to me, Tell me what you can see about my next life. Mm, mm -hmm. Oh, and that was such a spiritual moment for me, Ryan. It, yeah. It, it stayed with me all these years. And when I do the lectures and I use that chart, I well up when I get to this chart. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so that's optimism is amazing. Right. So when you're when you're thinking about, you know, when I heard you describe describing how the signs match up to the body parts and so on. Well, this is also very similar to um, what we're taught in Vedic astrology. And you know, obviously, at some point in time, there was cross pollination of cultures, so it didn't just come out of nowhere. Um, but my curiosity is. From what I understand of medical astrology, in order to get confluence, you know, one thing a person might do is see, is there an affliction to a particular sign representing a particular body part? And then they also check to see, based on that person's ascendant or first house, are there similar afflictions there? So is that how you build up your case, or is there another way that you, know, you approach no, it? No, that's, that's a good way of putting it. Okay. Like I said earlier, you can't oversimplify it. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, I think the two things that astrologers do is they oversimplify and they overcomplicate. Totally. <laughs> you need to find that middle ground. I, I look at some people's charts, you know, some astrologers' charts, they've got everything in the chart. They've got fixed stars. They've got the midpoints. They've got the asteroids. They've got everything that you can shove in there. Right. I simplify the chart. Yeah. I want to get to the real heart of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, I don't use the asteroids. I use uh, Chiron. Okay. Chiron is not an asteroid. It's a burnt out comet. Okay. And it's between Saturn and Uranus. So it represents the bridge between the personal and the interpersonal. Mm -hmm. um, and I know other astrologers who swear by the asteroids. Uh, you know, many roads lead to Rome, as they say. Uh, we all have our way of, of doing it. But you, you need, this is why I will take at least an hour or more uh, for a client's chart before I see them. 
Mm-hmm. And I work the whole thing up. Oh, I have some people who love to test me, especially other astrologers. Right. They'll shove a chart in my face and say, tell me what happened to me 12 years ago. And it's <laughs> happy. Sometimes right. I pray, sometimes it takes a little more time. Right. But if you do the work up, you'll come to that conclusion. You'll, you'll come to the proper conclusion. Uh-huh. Uh, and there, is, there are differences between Vedic and Western, but there are also... It's really, it, 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 they're different in the way that, as, as I understand Vedic, it's not my expertise. I, I've studied Western, it takes a lifetime to learn any of these things. Right. Um, but there are differences in the way that we view the planets and in the way you guys draw up the charts and what the ascendant right. is and so on. But ultimately, it's the same. Yeah, I mean, like, for example, you know, when we think of, um, like, the liver, you know, oftentimes, from our perspective, we'll say, well, let's check out Jupiter's situation there. I mean, I'm assuming, is it a similar thing with, with Western astrology? We have these yeah, kinds of... Jupiter first- rules the liver in Western astrology, too. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what I've always found fascinating. And, you know, from your approach, when it comes to timing, you know, one of the things we were talking about um, with Nadia in one of the earlier videos on this channel um, was epigenetics. And um, she was saying something um, about how you can see the potential, like the genetic potential in a chart, but then when, say, a particular transit comes about, that that's when that thing is going to get triggered. So when you're interacting with a client, um, do you look at their chart and say, all right, this is the, the general makeup of maybe the weaknesses you have in your body and the strengths you have in your body, and maybe these are the time periods that you're going to have to watch out for due to maybe transit of Saturn or Pluto? How, how do you approach that? Well, yeah, all of that is true. Uh, for example, to go back to, to my friend with the colon cancer, his natal chart showed the propensity right. for the problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, it did not have to manifest that way, more to the point, had he dealt with it several years earlier, they would have caught it quicker, you know. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I do so much focus on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think our job is to give people the best life that we give them. Right. and to help them in any way that we possibly can. Now, I have a number of clients who ref- don't tell me anything about my health, because if you tell me I might have it, I'm going to manifest it. And I, I laugh. I say, well, if that's, you know, if that's what you believe, that's fine. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> right. I, I prefer to protect you, but okay. Right. Um, for ex- and, and first of all, uh, just because there is that potential in the natal chart doesn't mean it will manifest. And more to the point, Sometimes we go through very harsh transits and progressions and nothing happens. Right. And other times you go through equally harsh transits and things will happen. Right. So it's just like going to a good intuitive doctor. Mm-hmm. He doesn't just listen to your heart and, and, and tap here and then you know, look there. He wants to know what your lifestyle is like. Right. How much stress are you under? Are you happily married? Do you have you know, a pet? Yeah. Right. And these things really make a difference. Right. And if you handle it, Properly, you can, of course, avoid a lot of issues, which is what I, I try and do for my clients. Uh, I had a, a woman uh, uh, just last week, and I saw, you know, we're talking about it's business. That's all she really wants to know about. I said, listen, you know, there's a few uh, medical issues that she immediately she shrieked on the phone. Don't tell me. It. It's not <laughs> me. I'm scared that you're going to tell me. I said, okay, fine. No. Right. And if she ever wants to know or something happens and she calls me, then I'll tell her. Right. But it's a combination of what the potential is. And then, yes, of course, we had a, a, a grand cross in Cardinal mm-hmm. in 2014 in, the, in all the Cardinal signs. It was very powerful. It was on America's sun. It's mm-hmm. one of the reasons why America is in the shape that it's in politically and in other, every other way. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it, it um, was a devastating aspect. Mm-hmm. And it hit many of my clients' charts. Right. Uh, it, it hit my chart. Uh, I had some issues, but I didn't have health issues. A lot because of the lifestyle I lead, and mm-hmm. because I, I was blessed with good genetics, but anything could happen at any time, of course. Um, I have uh, a number of people who that, uh, that grand cross hit their charts, and they did manifest physically. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I saw it hitting, especially the moon, I had a, a, a female wonderful woman friend, uh, I warned her about her digestion and her breasts mm-hmm. and the esophagus. Those are the areas I was most worried about. And in fact, it, it did lead to a, a problem in the breasts. And, uh, you know, she's gotten through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure that if we had seen it earlier, there was much we could have done anyway, because uh, the idea she had been examined 
less than a year earlier, nothing showed up. Right. These aspects did all of a sudden is manifestation. Mm -hmm. You are limited. And then one of the other things that's a hard thing for me to explain to my students is what astrology can't do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the limitations that it has. Right. And of course, we, everybody, they all want magic. And I explain to them, this is magic. <laughs> right. I can look at a piece of paper and tell you that, you know, what happened to you and what's going to happen and what your relationship with your mother was and, you know, and so on is unbelievable to me. I spent a lifetime saying it continues to amaze me. Right. But there are limitations to what we can do. Well, I think that's, I think that's a good point to mention, the limitations. And, and not to, you know, obviously what you're mentioning about it is magic. I, I feel the exact same way you do. You know, when you look at a chart and you're just looking at a piece of paper and the symbols and that you can even say anything, I mean, anything at all about a person that's accurate, that in itself is mind boggling, right? Absolutely. And the fact that you can even have great accuracy, well, that's even more magical. So, you know, I, I, do, I do try to draw the line personally, and, you know, maybe you can speak to this about this, that when you, um, when you are an astrologer and say, for example, you're doing any kind of predictive work or even medical astrology, like you did with your client where you said, I can't tell you if it's cancer or not, but you need to go get something checked out. Right. That we as astrologers, that we are information providers. Right. We're not necessarily your therapist. I mean, unless you're trained as a therapist, of course, but okay. you know, you give them the information and say, all right, look, here's your strengths. Here's your weaknesses. Now you need to you know, go talk to the type of professional, whether it's a nutritionist or a, you know, um, gynecologist or any kind of doctor that you need to deal with that. I mean, do you find that to be true as well? well that's one of the main things that I do, especially when I do medical reads, but also financial reads. Right. I try and explain to my students and to the, the audience there mm -hmm. that for one thing, you can be a great astrologer, but you need to know a lot about a lot of things. Right. I was on the floor of the Commodities Exchange for almost 14 years. Mm -hmm. I traded. I went up there as a neophyte. I'm a musician by trade. I knew nothing about money. I didn't want the last thing in the world I wanted to do. Yeah. But I needed a good job, and they offered it to me. So I said, oh, my God, yeah, I ran. <laughs> and I did so much studying, and I learned so much about how the markets work, and I learned so many different things so that I could really do it right. right. And so when people come to me now for financial advice, I come from a place of knowledge. Mm -hmm. when I got very, as I got more and more into medical astrology, I take courses in anatomy, I take courses in nutrition. I'm not going to go to medical school. I don't right. really care. I don't want to be a doctor. Right. But I need to know an awful lot about things in order to help them. I learned a great deal about supplements and about medications that they take. I've got a whole list of diets for high blood pressure for diabetes. I have a whole list of medical, uh, you know, Western medicine that they're going to give them. So when my client says, well, I'm on this drug or that drug, I you know, know what, means, right? what that means. Yeah. Yeah, and, you, and you know how it affects their bodies too. And what the side effects are going to be. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I work with uh, doctors, acupuncturists, therapists, a lot of different kinds of people. And I diagnose for the chart. And then I say to them, you go do your magic. You know? Right. Uh, and I had one, uh, one of my dear friends was studying to be an acupuncturist. He's now a very, very good one. This was quite a number of years ago. And he and his teacher were working on this woman's body for months, mm -hmm. trying to figure out the meridian and where the problem really began and so on. And he calls me up and he says to me, can you take a look at this chart for me? And I, you know, and I'm busy doing something else. I'm talking to him on the phone. And I take a look and I tell him in 15 minutes, would have taken him and his, and his teacher six months to come to the same conclusion. Right, right. You know, I'm not going to say I can always do that or that you, know, that you don't then do the follow-up work. But, you know, you can get to that point with astrology, as I'm sure you know. Yeah. Where you just, you know, and you blow people's minds in 10 seconds. You say, how can you know that? Right. So to me, this is the most amazing study I've ever done. Right. With the possible exception of music, which I also yeah, well, find as well. Well, what do you what do you play by the way? I'm out of curiosity. What is I'm a pianist. A pianist, okay. Yes. I, I play guitar so I can understand uh, I can understand the music thing as well. <laughs> I also play guitar because when I was a kid I was so obsessed with it that I would practice for six hours a day and my friends would, would literally kidnap me. Right. They would say we're going to pizza and they throw me in the car and drive me to New Hampshire for the weekend. But I had a good I learned to learn to play the guitar, so I had something to explore. Right. Yeah, you can't carry your piano with you everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but I, much more a pianist, yeah. yeah. And I, to, and it's, it, I, you know, it's the great, maybe the greatest love of my life, music. It, it truly is. 
Yeah. Except for a cock spaniel I had for 14 and a half years. I understand that too. Yes. One of the, one of the, one of the funny things in a, a Jaimini astrology, a particular Vedic astrology, they attribute, um, uh, Venus to being a, um, an indicator for being a good predictive astrologer. But Venus is also, from this perspective, indicated to be interested in music, which, you know, is kind of odd. Very much, yeah. yeah. But I've always found that to be kind of fascinating. So one thing, one thing about, you know, the medical astrology aspect, the thing I, I really enjoyed what you said there was that you have to know your topic, right? Yeah. So you do financial astrology, you worked in the financial industry, you would be someone that I would ask and I would say, yes, I would trust this person because I know you've, you've done it on both levels, right? right? Same thing with medical astrology, that if you, you have to be able to study the body, understand the interactions like you're describing, to actually look at the chart and, and put the things together accurately, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm curious about the, uh, the history uh, with what I consider to be Western astrology. I know in Vedic astrology, the idea of Ayurveda or their, their med natural medical system in India, not the allopathic, but the, the natural system, it was always tied to astrology and that this is the best time to administer this uh, medicine or take this herb or you are in this particular planetary period, so we need to protect this organ or so on. I I'm assuming that in Western astrology, there was a similar uh, practice. Is that so? Yes. Uh, in fact, it's funny. I, I had a very similar conversation with Nadia when we did our interview. Okay, okay. Uh, she's more into Vedic astrology. Yeah. Um, there are good and bad times, of course, for operations, for any kind of medical procedure. Right. However, free will is at best uh, a limited thing. I got a <laughs> call not too long ago from uh, one of my students. She was in the uh, emergency room. They wanted to take her gallbladder out. Mm -hmm. And the moon was void, of course, and she's a good student. And she said, what am I supposed to, what can I do? Her husband had actually made the call and I got her on the phone. I said, well, you have to find out from the doctors when the next time they might be able to do the operation. So right. It calls me back. She says it'll be six weeks and I'm in absolute agony. Right. I said, have the operation. Yeah. They do these operations every day, right. 10 a day, all the time. Right. They're brilliant at it. Sure, something could happen. It's not the day I would pick for right. a particular procedure, but emergencies happen. She had the operation. She was fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. So, uh, and as far as uh, uh, the ingestion of chemicals of all sorts, mm -hmm. legal and illegal makes no difference in astrology. Right. They used to put cocaine in Coca-Cola. And yeah. they used to give heroin. <laughs> Babies. So, you know, we've changed our approach, but some of the Western medicine they give us is probably worse. Than yeah. <laughs> uh, there are some people who do not absorb medications right. or chemicals well. Uh, those with very afflicted Neptune, for example, mm -hmm. Neptune rules the medication and it rules the absorption of it. And, uh, for example, digitalis comes from foxglove. Right. If you have too much foxglove, your heart will stop, just mm -hmm. as if you too much it's the same thing so the way that the, the chemical is going to be absorbed by the body is very much uh an issue to be considered and yes there are times when i will say to people this year until at least may i would be very very careful about what you ingest i would be careful about antibiotics about right. anything it doesn't matter you know whatever you're going to ingest and if i say drugs they say oh i don't do drugs talking you know medicine any drugs yeah right Mm -hmm. And alcohol, for example, alcohol in a small amount is very good for you. It's good for the heart. Too much, it's very bad for you. <laughs> Everything has to be balanced properly. Right. And I'll say to them, it's not a good year for you to be drinking because you're going to have a problem with it. You won't be able to stop or it will absorb into your liver too much. Right. Um, so, and so very, very, that's very true. And I also, when I was living in Cambridge many years, many, many years ago, I first started studying this, they had a street fair. And I found a tiny little, tiny little paperback book about this big, mm. Herbs and Astrology. Mm. I don't remember who wrote it. I bought it for a dollar. Yeah. And I studied that book and I found amazing things in that book that they had, whoever had written this, it was an old, old book. Right. I had taken all of the herbs, especially from England, because I believe mm. it was an English writer, and all of the different herbs, for example, sage is a Venus herb. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And there are all these different herbs. And if you have a problem in your natal chart with an afflicted Venus and you take sage, it will calm it down. And, right. and, so, and all, of this, all of this information, it all adds up. Right. And, and, and it's great. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. I think they're probably the same way. I, I, well, I one, of my, uh, one of my teachers, Richard Fish, who's from England, he's no longer with us anymore. But when, when I would go visit him, he studied Western astrology as well as Vedic. And the, the thing I really enjoyed, he was a gardener. Um, he loved plants. And he had this big garden that was a circle. And it was divided up into 12 sections. And it was oh, how funny. It was his astrological herb garden. So that's amazing. Yeah, and sections related to particular signs, particular plants. He had those plants there, and since he was an herbalist, you know, he worked with people with herbs, and he tried to link it up quite a bit with uh, with astrology. And I was never really sure if that was his Vedic side or his Western side coming out. That's why I was always curious about that. <laughs> Maybe he wrote the book that I found. Yeah. Well, I'm, I don't. Uh, he. I'm not sure about that. I've only known one book that he's he's uh, written by himself, but. <laughs> But yeah, it's wonderful stuff. And um, that led me to another question. Let's see. Oh, right. So when you're working with an individual, and like you talked about surgery, okay? Mm-hmm. So one of the primary um, real basic uh, fundamental principles that I had, I had heard was that y- if you're going to have surgery, you want to not have like the full moon in the right. sign rep- right. Related to the body part. Is that true or is that just a... Well, actually, it's not just the full moon. Okay. Ancient astrology says that the moon should not be in the place that of the part of the body that it rules that's being operated on. Okay. Now, some, some of the reason for that right. Right, has to do with bleeding. Right, yeah. In the old days, they put leeches on you. Today, <laughs> we don't do that so much. Right. Although the yeah. banks put leeches on you. That's a little different. <laughs> um, I think that they've gotten pretty much that kind of stuff under control. Mm-hmm. However, perhaps it's superstition. I don't know. But when I'm doing elective astrology and somebody says to me, I have to have my knee replaced and the moon is in Capricorn, I tell them, let's pick a different day. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Saturn rules the knees. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, and, but I don't think it's bleeding that we worry about so much anymore. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd always heard what you were saying with the bleeding, that wherever the moon was, that that tended to pull more fluid into that area right. of the body. That's, exact, that's exactly right. That's, that's, what, we, that's what the ancients yeah. believed. Okay. As to whether or not that's true, look, like with everything else, before I made up my mind about what works or doesn't work in astrology, mm-hmm. I've looked at thousands of charts. Right. I could never do my business today. I started it. You needed a slide ruler. Right. And, and you had to draw every damn chart up by hand and color it in and do that. I, who has got time? I look at hundreds of charts a day sometimes. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm working on, on a financial issue or a stock. I have to look at the stocks of 12 different companies. And so, you know, I punch it up, thank God, for computers. Right. You punch it up and look at it. And as a result, we get to look at so many more charts. Right. And uh, in order to do the right kind of research you know you look at hundreds of of clients charts who have the same problem breast right. cancer stomach issues knee problems and so mm-hmm. on yeah and I, you find the overlap i'm sorry you find the overlap to to get the information then yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and while you won't see the same aspect in everybody that has an issue i have found it's remarkable mm-hmm. but if you have 10th house capricorn saturn problems your problems are going to be the bones the knees the lower back the spine right. and by the way i i disagree with some of the uh, ancient uh, uh, things I and mean, there's a lot there there aren't very many medical astrology books out there that are worth reading frankly some of them are, are okay but there's very very few and i i actually went through one of them with my class and corrected it <laughs> okay because yeah. there was so many mistakes and that's yeah. so much vagueness about it Right. But I find that if there is a part of the body that is, or, or a part of the chart that's very afflicted, first of all, in the natal chart, but then by transits and progressions and so on, that's going to show up. It's going to, it, and, it's, and it's so remarkably accurate. Right. You know, it doesn't mean that I'm going to always be right. I, I don't want to always be right. I don't right. want that responsibility, you know. Right. But, uh, but the astrology is really quite, quite remarkable yeah. in, in accuracy. 
Well, you know, you bring up the point about not always being right. And that is one thing that I, I, I think needs to be stressed more often because, you know, for example, when we go to a medical doctor, they're not always right. When we go to a financial advisor, they're not always right. When we go to our mechanic, they're not always right, but they're going to be right. Hopefully, hopefully <laughs> most of the time, <laughs> but not all the time. <laughs> right. One hopes, yes. Yeah. So I think, I think, you know, we have this, uh, this idea about astrology and we kind of, even though we take it away from all the other sciences and try to make it seem like it should be more off, more often more accurate than other sciences when really it's a science too, you know, it's, it's no different than anything else. And one other thing that I like to share with people um, when it comes to astrology is personally, I mean, this is great that you're sharing this. I don't necessarily trust an astrologer who thinks they know everything. <laughs> I, I agree. You know, because, because it, there's, this, there's this room for error, certainly. But maybe when you look at a chart, I mean, this happens to me. It happens to, I think, astrologers all the time. There are just conflicting influences. One, mm -hmm. one thing says this is good. Another thing says this is bad. And by the time you get done, sometimes it's just crystal clear where you can say, yes, you need to pay attention to this, or this is the issue. Other times, it's not. And I think it, it's that point in time where an astrologer needs to say, I don't know. Like, I can't see it because it's not clear. I mean, wh what are your thoughts on that? I'm just, I'm curious because I would like to hear more astrologers' opinions on this because it drives me nuts when I do everything. When I do a reading for somebody, they usually run 90 minutes, sometimes two hours if, you know, if I have the patience for it. Right. Um, any more than that, we're all exhausted. Then you're not going to, you're just beating a dead horse. Right. And they, they sit down and they say to me, all right, I need to know where should I move? Right. And I tell them at the end of the reading, mm -hmm. after I have read your chart and I have looked into who you are, how you handle things, what you do, what you want to do, where your strengths and weaknesses are, then I will give you my opinion. Right, right. So it may take the entire hour and a half or two hours, and then at the end I'll say to them, okay, we've been through this, we've discussed this, I see how you function best. Right. This is my advice to you. Right. I think you're moving here, I think you're, this is the kind of job you want, I think this, these are your health issues. And with medical in particular, sometimes I take a look at a chart, it takes me five minutes. Right. I know exactly what the problem is. Other times, uh, like you say, there are, there are conflicting and overlapping aspects and things that, that need to be added to it. For example, how's your digestion? Oh, my digestion is great. Right. Well, then you talk to them for a while and you realize, what are you talking about? You yeah. eat wheat for breakfast, you eat wheat for lunch, you eat wheat for dinner, you have a wheat allergy. And you know, you're not you're telling yourself. <laughs> so you're like a hunk of cheese the size of your head every day. Well, I think that's good food. Well, let's discuss that a little bit. <laughs> right. Diet and exercise and probiotics and you know, yeah. vitamins and vegetables and things. I have, a, of course, quite a number of clients who are older and they are, many of them have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem with high blood pressure medication is the side effects are sometimes worse <laughs> than the high blood pressure. Right. So I've done a tremendous amount of research. I, I myself runs in my family. My blood pressure went up, especially when I lost Goldie, my dog. And uh, I said to the doctor, wow, I, I can't believe it. I said, well, I'm going to take care of this. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I'm um, okay, because he was an acupuncturist. He, he was a doctor, but he had studied acupuncture for two years in China. Right. And I said, well, I'm going to do some research, and I'll come back to you. And he insisted that I get a cuff and I check my blood pressure. And so I did. I wrote it down every day, a couple of times a day, made myself nuts. Mm -hmm. But I did all this research. And I now walk between five and 10 miles a day. I live in New York, which is a walking city. I eat asparagus and Brussels sprouts and raw garlic and raw tomatoes and avocado. And, right. and I lowered my blood pressure 50 points. Right. Yeah. Like 20 something over 80 something. And then. Just, you know, it's perfect. I mean, it's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. But it, it fluctuates a little bit. But I went back to him. He was amazed. Right. Absolutely amazed. His nurse said to me, please tell me what diet you're doing. <laughs> right. So right. I wrote out a diet for her. Yeah. And uh, the next time I saw her, she had dropped 15 pounds. Right. <laughs> and she was much healthier than she had been before. Yeah. Well, that, that's great. And that also illustrates, I think, a wonderful point that when you're working with an astrologer, it's it, aside from the entertainment value of just handing someone your chart and then saying, all right, tell me everything, that the actual growth and rapport that you develop with an astrologer is, okay, let's look at your chart. 
let's compare it to how you are working with that chart. And then we're coming at it from a very pragmatic angle and we're also using the astrology to support it. So it makes a little more, um, uh, you're coming at it from a, a greater foundation, right? You would agree with that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I also, look, I also think that for, for everybody, whether you're an astrologer or not, you want to add the real world with the esoteric world. We, right. we live in both. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, some people don't think of themselves as very spiritual. I understand that. And they want to know exactly the nuts and bolts, the way things work. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. I deal with my clients the way that they want to be dealt with. Right. Um, other people are extremely spiritual and psychic. And they want to know, you know, what about my past lives? What about my mother and my father? And what's the connection? And, you know, which is why when my friend uh, with the colon cancer was dying and he wanted to know about his next lifetime, right. uh, it was really quite a, like I said, a very moving moment for me because of his faith. Right. His unbelievable faith was remarkable. So you, you do need to, to combine all of the different values, I think. Right. Uh, all right. So, yeah, so all those points are definitely well taken. And, um, I think we can probably go ahead and conclude there today for the talk about medical astrology. But before we do, you know, you had mentioned and I had seen these, these books that you had been writing, The Murder in the 11th House, Death in the 12th House, and Evil in the 1st House. So can you tell us a little bit about these? Because it's always fun to have an astrologer who's multi-talented and incorporates astrology into literature. Yeah, I have a, a protagonist named David Lowell, who is a, 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 finan- he was a financial astrologer. <laughs> and that's how he made his money. Uh-huh. Uh, made a little more than I did. <laughs> he owned a townhouse in Manhattan, and he uh, he lost his son a number of years before, and that pushed him into wanting to help others. And so he became a detective, and he's surrounded by his uh, his uh, psychic uh, sidekick, who is a, a, a computer genius, and okay. and his uh, his uh, gal Friday Sarah, and his yeah. bodyguard. With wisdom, and David is also uh, uh, an Aikido master. Aikido is a very uh, passive uh, martial arts. I was very into the martial arts when I was younger, brown belt in, in judo and taekwondo. But uh, I always found Aikido to be particularly uh, interesting because it, it's such a passive thing, and it uses the other person's energy that, you know, instead of your own. Right. Anyway, uh, David uh, goes through his um, his murders and and, and uh, works through uh, his his uh, what I do in the in the books, um, and the reviews have been fantastic. I, I'm absolutely floored by them, and all of the reviewers in some pretty big publications have all said the same thing. Even if you don't know astrology, mm-hmm. Lewis gives you just enough and explains it in just enough of a way so that you can follow it. Right. And astrologers get a little more out of it, of course, because I use real charts for all of my, uh, uh, all of the uh, characters. And it, it actually took me just as much time to decide on the charts for the characters as to write the rest of the book. Right. <laughs> and I remember astrologers who have read them, and, uh, and they love that there's enough astrology in there to keep them interested. Right. And for them to say, oh, wow, and they draw up the charts. Uh-huh. Some of them, they punch them out on their computers, and they're looking at them while they're reading the books. <laughs> but I don't. I don't overwhelm you because this is supposed to be entertainment. Right, this yeah. isn't an astrology book. Mm-hmm. When I do my medical astrology book, that's for you and, and me and, and the rest of us to go and look at you know Saturn in the third house and what does that mean? So, and the next book that I have coming out is Saturn in the second house. Say, I'm sorry, Satan in the second. Oh, okay. House. <laughs> oh, wow. Of right. course, the Satan is yeah. comes from Saturn. Right. That's yeah. where Satan from. Uh-huh. And it has to do with Wall Street. David goes back down to Wall Street because one of his old friends has been arrested for murder. And so I get a chance to go downtown to visit my old haunts and, and right. whatnot. And um, uh, I'm actually looking for a publisher for it now. I, I ended my relationship with the publisher I had. Uh-huh. So I'm trying to find a new publisher for it. And, uh, you know, I wanna, I'd like to do all 12 of the houses. Yeah. Well, that'd be great. <laughs> it'd be wonderful. Yeah, and it's entertaining. It's long enough to get the work done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. Well, excellent. Well, thank you for, um, for taking the time to be on the channel. Um, it was really a pleasure to speak with you. And maybe we can do it again. Yeah, soon. Too, I appreciate the time. And it's great to get to know you. Yeah, and you will be, so you're going to be speaking, are you, you're going to be speaking um, on financial astrology at the yes. conference? Yes. And do you In know fact, what? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Do you know what your schedule is like when your when your talk will be? Uh, I'm doing I'm doing a uh, a panel 
Okay. The first day, which is Thursday, uh, with me and, and uh, Bill Meridian and a couple of other financial astrologers. And then I believe I'm talking Saturday morning. Okay. Okay. Well, folks, can, February doesn't sound like the most exciting place to be, but I'm sure it'll be fun. And well, we'll be there. you and I will be there. So, of course, it'll be fun. That's right. <laughs> it's hotel living, which I love. Yeah. They feed you. Somebody comes in. Cleans your house for you. Yeah, right. They have a swimming pool, I'm sure, a gym, you know, and a bar. It'll be, yeah. good. It'll be good fun. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, well, it'll be good. So, everyone, this is um, Mitchell Scott Lewis. You can um, go to his website, MitchAstro.com, to find out more about him. And you can also uh, find his books, Murder in the 11th House, Death in the 12th House, Evil in the First House. And uh, write to me and let me know what you think and leave him some good reviews. So, um, it's good speaking to you, uh, Mitchell, and um, we'll be in touch. Thanks. Great. Talk to you again soon. Okay. Be well.